Good afternoon and welcome to the revision session for the course Fundamental of Semiconductor Devices and OC 24E02. Uh, this is week 13 and the final time we are meeting in this formal setting. Uh, my name is Amit. I am a PhD student at ISC Bangalore. As I was, uh, uh, as I have been uh, in the feedback, I think last last week somebody said to talk about MOSFET. So I'll start with that. But first, a very quick recap of the even the the, the precursor to the MOS cap, which is the MOS capacitor. So we have a, as the name suggests, we have a metal. Uh, we call this usually, let's say, gate. Then we have what we call is an insulator, right? This is typically for a silicon-based uh, devices. So for instance, let's say this substrate is p-type semiconductor and so this will be an insulator and in this case we will take the example of silicon dioxide SiO2 okay and then we have this semiconductor substrate which is a p-type silicon and usually what we do is we ground this so you see two terminals one is K and the and the second is this terminal I ground this terminal so or the reference whatever you may want to call this uh, we had made some assumptions when we are talking about the MOS capacitor also known as MOS cap MOS cap uh, we had made certain assumptions about this so first of all uh, we'll see uh, so if you recall the Fermi levels the discussion of Fermi levels in the metals it's the it's level up to which uh, it's filled so electrons have energy film, uh, filled up to the Fermi level for semiconductors it's a slightly different construct in, in semiconductor world it's it's an analytical Fermi level is an analytical phrase but nevertheless Fermi level is the is essentially uh, is essentially a reference to the vacuum level okay second assumption we had in an ideal MOS cap is that there are no traps at semi oxide interface this is the most important interface which I am highlighting over here this is the interface between the oxide and the semiconductor this is where all the action will be happening right we don't want any traps here. We, uh, traps are essentially some energy levels which can which can alter the uh, which can either release the electrons or absorb the electrons thereby changing the electron concentration right so for ideal cases we'll ignore that also we'll ignore any trap charges in the oxide okay uh, then also the metal is equipotential that is if the, the metal is uniform it's a good metal deposition that you are doing in the last session we had talked about uh, certain techniques of metal deposition like conformal and non-conformal if you recall uh, sputtering and evaporation right so uh, we'll assume that metal uh, deposition is good enough uh, then we have the semiconductor thickness that is the substrate that we are talking about in the gray you are seeing is the depletion region right where does it where does it come from I will talk in a minute but let's uh, just the assumption is that this the total width of the semiconductor right which I call is T silicon right and this is the depletion width XD let's say depletion width and the thickness is T ox as is given so XD is much smaller than uh, your thickness of silicon that's the assumption that I'm making okay uh, right so uh, just a second okay after this uh, and this oxide is a perfect insulator this means there are no leakage paths available so uh, th that's the uh, that's the assumptions we are working with how does it work so first we have this flat band condition flat band means the 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 as the name suggests the bands in the semiconductor are flat so this is your metal side uh, this is your metal right and you can see when you're not applying any gate bias so Fermi level will be constant throughout so Fermi level will be somewhere over here as well in the metal side as well okay then you apply let's say some negative bias so in this is a p-type substrate because uh, uh, the valence band is closer to the Fermi level is closer to valence band and so uh, elect, uh, hole, elect holes is the majority holes will get attracted due to this negative potential and as you can see at this interface EV is closer to EF right that means uh, so if you recall the expression t equal to nv exponent of ev minus ef over kt if this has uh, uh, reduced right it's a negative number if this has reduced that's better your concentration of holes will increase i'm talking at the surface here okay but on the other hand if you apply positive bias you'll repel the holes away and you, what you will have is a depletion so you, you so what you're seeing here is this this is the depletion region XT that I was talking about in the previous slide okay if you increase the uh, bias even further the positive bias what will happen is that the, this is a this is an equilibrium please mind that so in EF uh, will remain flat just so happens that EF in the bulk is closer to EV while at the surface I'm calling this the interface or the surface right surface or interface between oxide and semiconductor you see EC is closer to EF so what has happened the nature of semiconductor has changed 
sorry the the nature of semiconductor at surface is n type now because ef is closer to ec at the surface while in bulk it is still p type how do i know that because you see ev ef is closer to ev and this is the this phenomena is known as inversion okay that's what's known as inversion and uh, a question based on that mos cap is said to be inversion when the dash carrier concentration at the surface so we want the carrier concentration at the surface which is the minority carrier concentration right so this is the flat band and this was the inversion mind you so there are some nomenclatures like phi f is this this difference is phi f between ei ei is nothing but the intrinsic level the mid uh, midpoint of ec and ev this is ec this is ev phi s is how much is the band bending so you see the band bending the band bending in ec ei and ev will be the same because semiconductor band gap is not changing all right so we say that when phi s equal to 2 phi f we have entered strong inversion and this is also known as the threshold of the device okay and as you can see uh, in threshold as uh, uh, an electron sheet, uh, sheet electron of charge will be formed at the center of this okay so what's happening is that in it when in inversion when the minority carriers this is a p type so minority is electrons so electrons at the surface this is also known as the surface as i have been telling you somewhat misleading because surface is somewhere here but we call this the surface oxide semiconductor interface is the surface equals or exceeds the the what the majority carrier concentration in the bulk so when the electrons at the surface i can draw right n at the surface is greater than or equal to p in bulk this is when we say inversion has happened so the answer is minority followed by uh, this option all right right so now we know mos cap what is a mosfet so essentially it's your mos cap if you ignore this source and drain region essentially what i have drawn is the is the mos cap itself so what happens is that you must be aware that we have seen that at a certain gate bias above when the gate bias is uh, uh, has crossed the threshold value right vg is greater than vt that is right what can happen is you can have an inversion layer of electrons this layer that i am drawing here and so electrons if it's contact in source and drain and if you apply a bias to 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 if you apply a lateral bias that is between source and drain the electrons can flow it's very simple a, a, a sheet of electrons is lying here you apply a bias on on the other, on the two ends of this sheet and the current will naturally flow right and this is a 3d uh, 3d uh, depiction of the same device so this is the p type substrate or the body as we call it uh, you have this source on uh, this is the source this is the drain that we have and this is the length the length that the same this is also known as the channel length or the gate length okay so this is the channel length this is the thickness of the oxide this, this fellow over here t ox as it's written and this is the gate the gate contact the gate metal this is made up of polysilicon uh this is essentially uh, there were various reasons uh, to switch to polysilicon right and this is the other dimension because this is 3d this is the 2 this is the front view and this is the 3d view this dimension usually we do not see over here so this is a front view let's say right in front view you don't see the depth of the device so this is the w is also being depicted over here all right in this 3d view fine and now what we can do is we can now bias the device how do we bias the device now we have two controls gate and actually three controls gate drain and body this is a four terminal device usually what we do is we make source as the reference or we ground this and also for more for most practical purposes we also ground the body okay so in this discussion i'll not be talking about body but there's a body effect you may refer to the uh, video lectures for that and we only talk about gate and drain so the only two controls we have is the gate and the drain gate we call the input side because gate will control whether the, this inversion layer is here or not so gate is the master you can say or gate is the input side and drain is the output side it will the drain will behave according to the gate how many electrons are there and so on. okay and based on this we have these three regimes so off state you can clearly imagine when the inversion layer is not there so no current will flow or only the leakage current will flow as we saw in the last class and there are other two regimes when we have the inversion layer and then that depends on the drain bias in the linear and saturation we'll talk a bit about it and this is the threshold voltage as i have been talking about so the second terms that you see uh, the terms that you see over here these two terms this is for the ideal vth 
But what can happen is that there can be metal semiconductor work function difference, which you can see over here. Metal work function is here, semiconductor is here. So we need to bring it to a flat band condition first. So we need to apply some bias to the device, to the gate rather. Right? And also there can be some trap charges in the oxide, which, which, which I'm calling that Q-ox. Let's call this Q-ox. The oxide trap charges, it's not perfect. There might be some trap charges. And this is the VT expression that we come. This, this first two terms are known as V flat band. The potential that you must apply to achieve the flat band condition. Please remember, all the analysis we had done was from flat band onwards. Okay? Right. So now we, we first talk about uh, the linear operation of the MOSFET. So, so this is the MOSFET schematic as I have been drawn. Kindly note the X, Y and Z directions because I will be using them. So X is from source to drain. Okay, X is from source to drain. Z direction is coming towards you and Y is uh, in the direction of the gate oxide. Okay. What we have, we have these N plus regions, the source and drain. This is a P-type substrate, P-type silicon substrate, let's say. Uh, what we have in this blue region that you are seeing over here is the inversion layer. So this means that I am applying, so this is the gate oxide and this will be the gate metal, right? This will be gate metal, I will be applying some BG over here, okay? And the dashed region that you see is the depletion region, right? That's what it said, it's the induced depletion region, all right? So now let's try to analyze this and first we'll make some assumptions. First assumption is that VG is greater than VT. This means the inversion layer is there, which you can see here in this case that this is the, the blue colored inversion layer is there. Second is that the VDS is small. This means laterally there is there is minimal electric field. Okay. What can then we can assume that Q inversion is uniform. That means laterally there is virtually for the for the sake of discussion, let's say negligible electric field exists. So what happens is that this region I'll draw two slices. So this slice one over here and slice two over here, they are identical, right? They are identical. It doesn't matter. They, they don't depend on whether they're close to source or close to drain. They are identical in nature, okay? So this is the assumption that I'm making, all right? So you will have this rectangular profile of inversion charge. Also rectangular profile of the, the depletion charge, which is the, the dashed region that my pointer is currently at, okay? What is the total gate voltage? So total gate voltage goes into what? So total gate voltage first will go into 5 ms, right? Then it will go into uh, some oxide trap charges, right? Then it will go into the depletion charge, this depletion region that you're seeing over here, right? QD over C ox. Then Q inversion charge, which you see in the blue region over C ox, right? Plus five f because the bends have to be bent note that inversion has to kick in first two terms are to achieve the flat band condition then we are causing depletion then we are causing the band bending for inversion and finally the inversion is happened okay so this vg the total vg is being spent into each of these components okay what is vt vt we have already seen this is actually q ox over here right so what you can see is that all the terms are there correct what I can then write is that from this, right, I can simply write that Vg equal to Vt minus Q inversion over C ox. And from there, Q inversion I can write as C ox times Vg minus Vt. And what will be the current? Current, sorry. Current will simply be uh, uh, the, the charge that we have. And this C ox is normalized with respect to area hence we multiply with area first okay into area by time uh, time time taken to traverse this distance so what will that be tau i can simply write because uh, the field is uniform from in the lateral direction in the x direction i can write simply the time uh, the time will be length divided by the drift velocity and what is vd uh, I can also write VD equal to, you remember, mu E. We are assuming low field regime here. So mu times E, E is electric field, right? And I can then write mu times electric field would be the applied potential, which is VDS over L, the length, simple. So I put all these terms over here. Q inversion is C ox VG minus VT uh, divided by, sorry, this is divided by tau. Tau is L. And there is an area term also, so it will be W into L, right? This is the area, W I am not showing, this is, uh, yeah, this is over here, W is over here, uh, divide by L, so this will be L squared by mu 
VDS. You arrange these terms, you will get uh, mu will come mu C ox, one L will, will get cancelled W over L VG minus VT times VDS. This is the expression that you get. We call this regime the linear regime. Why the linear regime? Because current is dependent linearly on VDS. So if I have to draw this so ID as a function of VDS, I will draw a straight line. And if I increase the V, if I reduce the VG, so let's say this corresponds to VG1, VG1, this is VG2, then VG2 is greater than VG1, simple as that. This is the analysis that we have done. Now, uh, let's do a different thing now, what, what I am going to do now. This is the graduate general approximation, in fact, the heart of the understanding of how a MOS, MOSFET works. Okay. So now this time what we have is VDS is not small. VDS is, 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 is reasonable. So in the previous problem, let's put some numbers. Let's say VDS is 0.1 volts, very small, barely any electric field in the lateral direction, right? Now what I do is I have, uh, I have a VDS such that Q inversion decreases gradually towards strain, hence the name gradual channel approximation. And let's talk a bit more about this. And why is it, why in the first place is it even happening? Okay, so let's see that. So you have your source here and you have your drain here, drain and source, and you have your uh, oxide and then you have the metal gate, correct? So what's going to happen is that the gate voltage is same at each of these slices, over here as well as over here. What is different here for force, source and drain, this is the body and let's say I am grounding it. Please remember body is what? P type. Drain is what? N plus type. You have an N plus V junction and this you are applying positive bias to drain, right? So what you will have, you will have a depletion region. This is a reverse bias and this will extend extensively into the low doped region which is P. So the depletion region will look and this is also N plus by the way. This is also N plus but this is unbiased but again here the most of the depletion will, will be rising in residing in the p region so how the depletion region look let's say i'm not applying any gate bias even then how will it look it will look something like this you can see that the depletion region will be more near the drain as compared to the source correct and i'm just not even i'm not even considering the gate role i'm just considering these two n plus p junction this is how the depletion region will look now if you take a slice the total charge under 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 this slice one and slice two has to be the same correct what happens is that near the drain the more charge is being spent in depletion and less in inversion please remember the total charge how will it be spent we had already talked about it. 5 ms then some trap charges then inversion then depletion so here more of these the gate charge, the gate voltage is being spent in depletion region, right? The depletion will, will be narrower near the drain. It will be wider near the source and hence you see this gradual profile, okay? Now what we do, we do the same analysis as before. Q, Q inversion of X will be C ox. Earlier it was VG minus VT because VX was negligible. Now it will have, so I'm taking any slice over here, here. The slice I'm taking here, the potential I'm assuming to be VX. Okay. This is the Q inversion, right? Again, the current will be Q inversion times area over tau. What will be tau? Tau will be distance to travel, a time to travel this distance, delta x, delta x, drift velocity is VD. VD is mu e. Again, I am assuming we are in the low field regime. Please remember, VD equal to mu e. So this, this is how it look like, VD and e, right? We are in the low field regime. We are somewhere here. Uh, electric field will be dVx over dx because this is the potential Vx I'm talking about here. What you do, you put all these numbers here and you just, this gets cancelled. Uh, what what uh, you will have is now, is this will come out to be mu C ox, uh, mu C ox W Vg minus Vt dVx minus Vx dVx over dx into i. You take dx on the other side, it will come i into L and you integrate this where, so I'll write that 
IDX integration is from 0 to L from source to drain okay mu C ox times W is constant and at x equal to 0 what's the value of Vx the value of Vx is 0 okay so I'll write Vg minus Vt let's say minus Vx dvx from 0 to Vdx if you integrate this, you can see a linear term will come here and a quadratic term will come here. So if you integrate this, you will get i into l. I'll take i into l will come here. I'll take l on the other side. It will be mu and c ox w over l vg minus vt times vds minus, uh, sorry, this will be uh, vds whole square by 2. This is how the expression will come, right? Now, uh, an interesting thing happens. What happens? Let's say you increase the gate bias even more. Sorry, the drain bias even more. This was from the previous uh, slide. So, if you increase it even more, what's going to happen? This depletion uh, share in this slice near the drain will increase even further. So, what you will see is that this can happen. This means there's no inversion near the gate. This is called channel pinch off. This means the inversion ch channel does not even exist anymore. What we'll do, this is the inversion charge, we'll make it equal to 0. If you make it equal to 0, you'll get Vx equal to Vg minus Vt. This is known as Vds sat. This is what is known as Vds sat. Right? Fine. And this is the picture that I have, uh, same picture I have drawn here. In the green, you have the depletion charge. In the red, you have the inversion charge. And on the left side is your source. So here is your source. On the right side is your drain. Gate is over there. If you increase the VDS even further, what's going to happen? This point, now more and more depletion will kick in. And this point will keep on shifting towards the left. Right? You can see. So here in this case, I have got VDS1 greater than VDS in this particular case. Because it shifted even to the left. Right? Okay. So, since I, you know that inversion charge is not there anymore. So, what's, will there be any current? That's the, pro that, that's the question. Increase in current will not be there anymore. With VDS, what's going to happen because the channel is been off. The VDS cannot contribute to the current anymore. It cannot increase uh, sorry, the enhancement of the current anymore. Okay. So the current will saturate. Current will current will stop increasing. Okay. And what you see is you get this kind of a flat line. We had already drawn the linear region in the previous slide, if you remember, for the linear region. This is the quadrilateral region that we get. And finally, in the saturation region, we get a flat line because current will not increase any further. As simple as that. The blue region is something interesting, which is a short channel MOSFET. I'll, uh, I'll come to that in a minute. But uh, first, uh, let me just complete the long channel MOSFET. And we'll define the, what a short channel MOSFET is. Okay. Okay. So, right. So now the question then arises. One minute. Sorry? Oh, one hour. During a pinch of, if yes. you increase the gate voltage, yeah, the okay. depletion uh, needs to increase in yeah. the inside. No, no. So, so if you increase the gate voltage, what's going to happen is that you are going to increase the inversion charge. So, uh, let's, let's just say that these are two different gate voltage. Let's forget about short channel effect for now. These are at two different. You remember the linear region? I call this VG2, this curve, and this curve was for VG1, right? Even in this case, VG2 is greater than VG1. So when you're increasing the gate voltage, because please remember the expression that we had was mu C ox w by l vg minus vt times vds minus vds whole square by 2. In this to arrive at the saturation current you put vds equal to vds sat which is vg minus vt. You put this term over here you will get vg minus vt whole square. So if you increase vg you will still get an increase in drain current. So you see this jump from this to this. That will still happen because that because what's going to happen the inversion charge is still getting increased in the second when you increase the gate bias. I'm only talking uh, the change when happening when you when you fix the gate bias and you're changing the drain bias. So let's follow only the red curve. I'm talking that case. You have fixed the gain by, gate bias at whatever value you want. Of course, in after above threshold, right? And then you change the drain bias, right? What you are saying now, if you increase the gate bias, now then now the inversion layer itself has increased. The inversion charge itself has increased. That's a different thing because you see in this expression, this also comes. Okay, so you have to decouple the problem. You first analyze. Uh, you first analyze that. Let's say what happens when we change the only the gate bias, increase the gate bias, or 
Second analysis, when we fix the gate bias and we increase the drain bias. So all the discussion that I'm having, I have fixed the gate bias. So if you remember in the previous slides also, what I do is I is I fix the is is I fix the gate bias. It's that it's above threshold. Same analysis is here as well. I should have written that actually. Uh, here also, Vg minus Vx is greater than Vp. So we have an inversion layer already there, and we're I'm fixing the gate voltage just varying the drain bias in this analysis. Okay, and finally once you have analyzed one set of such values, then you can change the gate bias and then plot for Vg2 and Vg3 which I am doing here. Okay, the first point I am doing here and then I increase the VG and I get the second curve. I increase the VG even further, I get this third curve and so on. All these curves are such that, that VGS is greater than VT. And if VGS is less than VT, what will happen? We had already talked about no current will flow. Or I will say, we will we'll not, we'll not say no current will flow, only leakage current will flow. Remember in the last session we had talked about the leakage currents. Uh, we are talked in context of these GAN based hems, but the leakage current still is a concept that's valid to MOSFETs as well. Okay, so that is the case, that is the complete picture over there. Does it answer your question? Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay, fine, thank you. Okay, so as I was saying that if, if the inversion layer is no more, how is the current being transported? How is the current transport even happening? That's what this question asks. A source current is a, a current source is a device which supplies a constant current irrespective of the voltage applied across it. A long channel MOSFET can be used as a current source. So we know the long channel MOSFET characteristics look something like this: ID versus VDS. Right. We want a constant current source. So if you so if you operate this our MOSFET over here, this is constant current. This is linear region. Right? So if we operate such that we are in constant current mode, which means Vg must be greater than Vt. You all you must have an inversion layer. And second, Vds must be greater than Vds sat, whose value is Vg minus Vt. So this is your Vds sat in this case. Okay. can be used as a current source in saturation region and so how is the current transport happening so i told you uh, let's say let's pinch off this channel here okay this is the inversion layer this is the let's say depletion layer. Uh, we have source and on this side here the drain how, how is the, so inversion layer I can understand that the electrons are there, how are they happening here? From here to here, rather from here to here, it will be dripped. This is very similar what we had, remember base collector reverse bias junction, this is the same thing. In the depletion region, electron within, uh, the electron reaching within the uh, one diffusion length will simply be swept away by this electric field which happens, in, which, which you know, depletion region, there is an electric field, right? Uh, sorry, uh, yeah. So saturation and drift will be the answer for this problem. Okay, this is I'm this analysis is I'm drawing. This is the pinch off. This is the channel pinch off point. So I'm operating in saturation region. All right. So till now, and this is the drain characteristic and the expression how it looks like. We have seen this multiple times. Uh, within half an hour, and uh, we have 30 more minutes. I'll take a pause here and uh, till now uh, we, I've, I've just revised the beta MOS cap and the working of the MOSFET in, in some detail. I'll take a pause. If you have any doubts, please feel free to ask because from this point onwards, I'll be talking about the short channel effects. If not all of them, a couple of them and rather the reason why the short channel effects even came into the picture. Yes, uh, so uh, for, for every device essentially, uh, you can define a breakdown voltage. The, the concept remains similar. So, uh, if you recall the breakdown voltage, how we defined, we defined that when you, when the channel is not there in the in the case of. Uh, so I'll write it here. So I'll write it here. Breakdown voltage. Let's say how the device looks when we do not have an inversion layer. How does the device look? That is, the device is off. Right, so uh, let, let's have a look at. Uh, sorry, bad drawing. 
let's try to see how it looks so uh, we have this source we have the drain we have the gate oxide right and we have this metal gate over here this is the oxide all right and let's say i am applying vg equal to vg less than vt this means the inversion layer is not there okay and let's say some depletion is there but whatever the inversion layer is not there okay and you have this body terminal over here right and vd this is we typically ground so what can happen how can the breakdown even happen can you even you can itself you can yourself see that there are many uh, avenues for breakdown this is a so this is a np junction right this is n plus this is p this is again n plus this is p you can see that these two regions there is uh, we are taught about the pn junction the avalanche breakdown can happen right and uh, the zener will most likely not happen because this is body is not high dope this is moderate or low dope but this is high dope so all the depletion will be on the p side we have talked about this but this breakdown can happen even here there are various pathways of the uh, current leakage path mechanism right so what so what what usually can happen is that i'll i'll draw an extreme scenario is something like this uh, uh that let's say the depletion region is something like over here i'm not applying by the way the gate bias is still less than vt so so this, this red region is the depletion region for source okay the green region is depletion region for uh, due to the gate okay and finally uh, the black region right is for depletion due to the drain this drain and body pn junction right if you increase the drain bias you know the the depletion region will widen what can happen is that these two can now just join together right and uh, i mean there are things uh, there are there are various leakage mechanisms that do get to the picture especially when the when we reduce the channel length so so the, the the concept of breakdown exists even in these devices right the, the the fundamental principle remains the same and when the leakage path when when the channel is not there and if you still see some current flowing between source and drain the depletion regions join if you can clearly see the depletion region joins there will be an electric field and the electrons which at in one diffusion length can now traverse in depletion region means there will be an electric field they can simply traverse the whole length there will be some leakage paths that will be available okay and if the and if the if, if it's strong enough in fact in fact i have not drawn here we are seen in terms of bjt they go something like this the breakdown happens so the breakdown mechanisms are still there it's just that we don't talk about it because it's in the when it's a working condition that that is of more interest to us all right okay so now we talk about the short channel mosfets and the core of it why does why did we even why do why do we want to decrease the length of the channel why can't we be happy with whatever we have the reason is that uh, so this was the law which was said that the transistors will double every 2 years on a chip chip is essentially a given area the transistor will double how will they look like they said and this is actually how it happened okay this don't go into the numbers on the left is your log scale but you can see is that it has more or less kept trend for decades now rather so what you have see uh, what you what you can see is that the, the various technologies that that have come into the picture pentium is what you you must have seen in your uh, in your laptops or computers right so these are various technologies what actually is happening behind the scenes is that moore said that it's it's the moore's law which said that transistors will double every 2 years so what does that mean so let's say i have an area i have a chip of 1 cm cross 1 cm okay and i have let's say that each area of the tra tra of individual transistor is a okay or let's say small the area of each transistor is small a so how many transistors will be there they will be 1 cm square over a okay these will be the number of transistors number of transistors will be 1 1 over a let's say 
and a is usually very small number micrometer square or something so this number will be 10 to the power 5 10 to the power 6 what he said that is that that this in the same area the number should double okay fine so let's double the number let's say new transistors will be 2 by a right and uh, the area will chip area will be 1 centimeter square over the then the new transistor area which is b so transistor area has gone from this is transistor area transistor area from a to b it has moved right so you see the value of b here will come out to be a by 2 this means the area of the transistor has to become half the each individual transistor has to become half in area okay so what i do is that that means let's say the transistor is w into l w prime l prime is the new length w l over 2 right or we can say that w prime should be w over root 2 similarly l prime should be l over root this is one of the solutions okay or we can say that new dimensions should be 1 over root 2 of old dimension 1 over 7 2 is let's say 0.7 so this is 0.7 times this factor is called alpha the scaling factor this means we have to we have to in order to keep up with this law doubling the transistors every two years for every two years we have to scale this dimension scale the length every length by 0.7 if the length was one micron earlier you make it 0.7 microns if it's a 0.7 you make it 0.7 into 0.7 that is 0.49 microns and so on you keep you keep doing this that's what this problem is right then i propose the scaling right and he says for a scaling factor alpha which i've already established is close to 0.7 how will the lateral dimensions be scaled right v vertical and lateral dimensions be scaled so we know that if the v is the height earlier uh, sorry if v was the height earlier now it should become alpha v if l was the length earlier it should become alpha l and please note that alpha is less than one okay so v should reduce v should not increase L should not increase this. V should reduce to alpha V and L should reduce to alpha L. Okay. How will it look like? This is your original MOSFET and you can see that the lens, you can see the different lens, especially this T ox and L. Right, they have reduced. This is now alpha L and this is alpha T ox. Right? This is the scaled MOSFET. So this was this was what was proposed that you scale the reduce the vertical lateral dimensions by alpha and correspondingly. What you have to do, you have to do a constant field scaling. So, how? What is the expression for field? Uh, so, field is uh, electric field. If you see, is uh, uh, one second. dv over dx. So, this is delta v over delta x. Right. This is the voltage upon length. This is for electric field. We want to do a constant field scaling. Means we want to keep the field constant. Why? Why do we want that? vd equal to mu e we want the inherent characteristics the vd that the drift velocity which will dictate the current we don't want to change that that's why we want to scale that device without sacrificing the current that's the idea okay mobility anyways material we are not changing let's say so there's only the electric field if we keep constant we'll be fine by scaling we can get still advantages we can double the area without sacrificing the performance right and to so that we need when we are reducing the delta x the length this means we have to reduce the supplies and all the potential as well. Hence, if you do this step, this step naturally follows. If you are reducing the length, you must also reduce the voltages. Naturally follows for E constant. What about doping? If you remember in, in the depletion, in the PN junctions, remember that PN junctions, very first device we talked about, the electric field profile used to look something like this on the p side this is on the n side and we had written this expression nd times xn equal to np times xp correct uh, so this was xp this was xn this is the electric field profile that we had drawn this is the peak electric field e naught correct and we want this to be constant again so if you, so, if you, so so if, you, if, we, if we are reducing the length we must increase the doping and hence this also follows from this okay so this was the scheme this was the scaling that was proposed that you reduce the dimensions by alpha, all the dimensions, the vertical, lateral, everything by alpha. Secondly, correspondingly, you have to reduce the supply and threshold voltage by alpha. You can reduce the supply voltage, yes, but threshold voltage is a bit tricky to control. Why? Remember, what's the expression for threshold voltage? Phi ms minus uh, Q 
aux by c aux this is the trap charges right they do not scale phi ms is fixed for a given metal and a given semiconductor they do not scale right and then we had qd by c aux c aux anyways you still have some control the pigeon charge you have some control at plus 2 phi m right these you can still somewhat control but scaling the threshold voltage below a certain point was challenge all right okay so let's just complete this analysis for now uh, so what we had it already seen for a scaling factor alpha the supply voltage should reduce by alpha right so uh, vdd should reduce this is wrong this is wrong and uh, the doping con doping should increase so doping should increase so this is the correct option okay so and again this was from the constant field scaling as what i had talked about in the last slide okay so uh, uh, i have 20 more minutes we should be fine okay now let's let's try to do some what is the actual effect of this of this drama that we are doing scaling everything by 0.7 uh, every scaling length scaling voltages and all those uh, uh, things that we are doing do we get anything do, do we gain anything let's see that so here we are calculating gate capacitance okay the gate capacitance i know is epsilon oxide times area over t ox right let's say for a scaling factor alpha how will it be okay so this is let's say cg old this is cg old what will be cg new epsilon will not change i am still using silicon dioxide whether old or new technology right i'll write here as this old one is epsilon ox into w into l over t ox now every length has to be scaled by alpha so alpha w alpha l by alpha t ox one alpha we will cancel you will get w into l over t ox the second term is nothing but your cg old so cg new has reduced by a factor of alpha and even if you don't know anything about delays you know 1 over rc is your time constant right and frequency is your 1 over tau so essentially what you are doing you have reduced the gate capacitance right and that in fact is uh, uh sorry tau is rc not 1 over rc frequency is 1 over rc tau is some factor of rc okay so if you're reducing the capacitance you're reducing the time and thus you're increasing the frequency remember last session when we talked about for radio frequency transition we want to increase the frequency to have better gain and what not it works here so we can see that the scaling improves the uh frequency of operation what this means is that earlier 10 years ago or 15 years ago the smartphones you you cannot even imagine of playing a, a video game on that uh, mobile phone a smart for the, the very first smartphones that were in the market now people are uh, playing uh, a very uh, heavy user interface in uh, video games on their mobile phones like right? it heats up yes what it supporting and that performance is getting better and better how because of the, one of the fundamental reasons is the scaling simple as that you are able to, the same mobile phone right you are able to fit more transistors that means you are able to perform more functionalities at a better frequency so performance is improving and cost is is not increasing to that to, to to that extent that is very rare for any technologies right for instance if you see in 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 automobiles cars let's say if you want to increase the performance the price usually increases for instance the same model uh, let's take an example i do not know the prices of that but the uh, scooter uh, scooty let's say activa which used to be for 50000 its cost may have increased to 1 lakhs by now i'm talking about in span of 10 or, 10 or so years the performance has not increased drastically yes some things have gotten better braking has gotten better tires have slightly improved uh, uh, the, the, the chassis is 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 much more resistant to damage in cases of accidents yes but not a fundamental very fundamental shifts right this is a technology in which the price does not increase prohibitively that's what i mean to say okay so fine we have now scaled the channel lens as well the l which we talked about so the choice for the previous question is cg decreases oh yeah sorry about that cg decreases yes to alpha cg because alpha remember is a factor that's less than 1 right okay so next we have is yeah so now we know we we understand the need for scaling now let's see that okay uh, the scientists and technology decided fine we'll scale what will be the effect then what is, what does 
will the physics change how will it change let's see that so this this is a question to identify what is a short channel MOSFET what is the definition so uh, yeah so here I have the two so this is the long channel this is the short channel and you can see some thicknesses you can see the thick oxide thickness is reduced and uh, you can see that doping is n plus has become n plus plus all those things you are seeing uh, as per the proposal of Bernard. Now let's draw the depletion regions again. Again, I'm not applying any gate bias. Forget about that. Okay. So how will the depletion region will look? Let's say it looks something like this. Okay. How will the depletion region look? This is n plus plus. This is still p. And I'm not even applying any gate bias for now. I'm ex exaggerating a bit, but. I am deliberately doing that to, to just drive home the point that as to what I am talking about here. So these are the depletion widths that you are seeing, uh, let's say the depletion width near source, near drain and the channel length. So what you can see that the depletion widths take a substantial part of the channel length in case of a short channel MOSFET. They are comparable. Okay. So statement one says channel lengths for short channel MOSFET are much larger than depletion widths of source and drain junction. No. For long channel MOSFET, this is true. For short channel MOSFET, this is false. They are comparable for a short channel MOSFET. And we will see that short channel MOSFETs, it shows deviations from square law, the gradual approximation that we saw. So this is true, we will come to that. But for now, first one is false and the second one is true. So this is the correct option. Okay. This is the definition of short channel MOSFET. All right. Okay. So uh, in the other two regimes, uh, what, what I say, the linear region more or less, it's the, the analysis does not change much. The gradual channel approximation still is, still holds true in that. The key things happens in saturation as to what the, what is going on in saturation. So this is the diagram that we had seen. We saw two slices near the source and drain. We, we say the near the drain, the depletion is more. Why? Because depletion, uh, because drain is, we are providing positive bias to drain. And there's a depletion region in the source and body PN junction, right? Right. In a long channel, we saw that VDS is large, so that gets pinched off near the drain. So we saw that it behaves something like this for long channel, correct? This is the pinch off for long channel, right? And, uh, and if, if the VDS pinches off, then the lateral field does not increase because lateral field is dropping only in this region, not here. Here, it's, it's the depletion region. All the field, the VDS that you are applying is dropping here, right? And if lateral field is not increasing, then the velocity will not increase. Why? Vd equal to mu e. If electric field is not increasing, the velocity will not increase, current will not increase. Simple as that. We put we, we put that here, remember that, and we put it equal to zero. From that we got Vx equal to Vg minus Vt. That is a pinch off point, this point. Here the point is Vx. At Vg minus Vt is what we also known as Vds sat, and this is the expression that we got in the long channel case. In the short channel case, What's happened for that, even though we have not applied such a long, such a high VDS, the velocity gets saturated, okay? Here, the reason was that velocity had not saturated in long channel, but the field stopped increasing because the channel got pinched off, simple as that. So if the field did not increase, the velocity will not increase. And whatever Q inversion you have, Q inversion into velocity is essentially will be your current. That, that will stop increasing, right? Here, the case is different, okay? So what do I mean by that? I illustrated with this point. So what we have over here is is on the in the red curve we have the long channel, in the blue curve we have the short channel, right? And let's just try to find out the electric field at Vd equal to 1.6. So I'll find E long equal to uh, Vd over and the whole length and the length of the device is, is given here 10 microns. So this is 1.6 over 10 microns. So this will come out to be uh, uh, what will this 1.6 over 10 so this is 0.16 into 10 to the power 6 volts per meter uh, right so I can say 1.6 10 to the power 5 volts per meter and uh, volts per centimeter I can also say 1.6 10 to the power 3 volts per centimeter Let's try to find out the electric field, the same potential of 1.6 for the channel length of 0.18 microns. Okay, this is 1.6 over 0.18 microns. 
So let me just get my calculator. So 1.6 over 0.18. This is coming out to be 8.9. 8.9 into 10 to the power 6 volts per meter. This means 8.9 into 10 to the power 4 volts per centimeter. Right? Sorry. So let's see whether the velocity is saturated or not. So for long, the electric field was some 10 to the power 3 or something. So we were here. So this is for long. And you see we have not saturated yet. For short, electric field is applied over here is 8.9, 10 to the power 4, almost 10 to the power 5. This means somewhere over here. This is for short. But you can see we have already saturated. The electric field is saturated. The electric field is saturated. Vd equal to mu e, please remember, is valid only in this linear region. So if, you are, if your electric field, if your velocity is saturated, even if you increase the electric field, it will not happen. You will have an earlier onset of saturation. This due to velocity saturation, not due to the electric field saturation, but due to the velocity saturation. Okay. And this is the fundamental difference. The current for a short channel MOSFET saturates at larger VDS as compared to long channel MOSFET. No, it saturates at lower VDS. As you can, this is an experimental plot. You can see at it saturates at even lower points. Okay. Right, uh, so first is false. Statement two, short channel MOSFETs reaches critical electric field at smaller applied bias leading to velocity. This is true. One is false and two is true. I've already talked about the, uh, the explanation in the last slide itself. Okay, now again, more problems related to short channel MOSFET. Here in the first statement, we want to talk about how does the ID depend with VGS? Remember we had talked about their uh, VGS minus VT into VDS for long channel. A linear regime and so on. We'll, we 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 should talk about the same analysis for short channel as well. So, so what we know in short channel VDS channel is short enough that velocity saturation hits. So we are operating somewhere over here, correct? And this is the expression for the current that we have been seeing. An inversion charge will be somewhere like this. I am again assuming VDS is very small over here. Okay. So uh, the linear regime is uh, let's say if we are talking. Okay. Right. What will be tau? Tau will be the length divided by v sat because velocity is already saturated remember that okay so what will be the current current will be c ox vg minus vt by tau tau is uh, actually into area also into w into l divided by tau tau is l over v sat so we get c ox w vg minus vt times so you see that uh, what is happening is that ID is scaling linearly with VGS. It's not dependent on VDS. It will not depend. Why it not depend? Because uh, the, the the VDS is not playing a role anymore. We have already entered the velocity saturation. So that is irrelevant to us in this case. Okay, and thus the dependence will look something like this. Remember that this is the saturation. This analysis is in saturation. Short channel device in saturation. In long channel, if you recall, this was Vg minus Vt whole square by 2, something like that, right? This is a linear scaling with Vgs, right? So first statement is true. Second is, magnitude of current in a short channel MOSFET is comparable or larger? No, it's actually smaller. We had already seen that it's lower because of the early onset of uh, early onset of velocity saturation. So two is false. One is true and two is false. First option is correct. Next, uh, we have is what, what happens when VDS is increased, right? So let's talk about that. This is for a long channel MOSFET, right? and this is what this is the this is the more elaborate picture when we have an after the pinch off. Okay, so let's see what is happening again. All the terms are self-explanatory here. The pinch off is happening here. This is the total length L, and delta L is essentially your difference where the pinch off is happening. So this is essentially where the, where the carriers will will have to drift. Okay. okay, so what we have is now L effective. So L effective is this L effective is nothing but L effective is L minus delta L. You see this, the uh, they have to travel only this much distance. Right? So effective channel length, the inversion layer is only in this L effective length, this, this length. L effective. L effective has reduced, effective channel length has reduced, right? And what will happen? Now, uh, what you can see is that uh, for 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 first hand, you can clearly just even if you don't know anything about short channel effects, 
So, but what we do know is that it's mu n c ox w by l so on and so forth. If you're reducing the l, right, when you're going from long channel to short channel, you're reducing the l essentially, right? This l is essentially l effect. If you're, if you're reducing the l, the current should increase. As simple as that. Very first hand, just just but some analytical expressions. Okay, this is ID. If you're reducing the L, the current should increase. Okay, that's what happens. So effective channel length decreases, and total drain current increases. Right? How does it increase? We'll try to quantify this problem. Okay. So we are given a ch N channel MOSFET, VGS greater than VT. So we are in we have inversion layer is there. VDS is greater than VGS minus VTH. This means so this this means inversion is there this means we are in saturation okay and rest of the things are self-explanatory channel length modulation effect to be significant okay so this means channel length the, the thing that i talked about the channel length is reduced right that is known as channel length modulation effect this thing the channel length has been modulated okay okay so let's see what's going to happen so this is the diagram that sorry this is the diagram that we have right and what we have is id equal to mu and c ox w by l vg minus vt whole square by 2 all of these terms i'll take to be some constant let's say beta so id is beta over l and now i'm reducing the length right so new id id prime is will be beta over l minus delta l the l effective this length this is l minus delta l Channel length modulation. Okay. I can write beta over L into 1 minus delta L over L or beta over L 1 minus delta L over L like this. You apply the binomial approximation, it will become 1 plus delta L by L. Alright. Beta over L is nothing but ID or the original. 1 plus delta L over L. You can see the ID is increasing. That's what I had told in the last. Uh, problem itself okay now what we want to do is now we want to uh, put some number to this now you can clearly see the delta l is dependent on how much vds you are going to apply if you if you don't apply any vds above saturation above vds sat correct the delta l is not going to be there okay the channel length modulation will not even happen hence we also we call this this a direct dependence on vds linear dependence on vds channel length modulation is directly dependent on vds the higher the vds will apply the more pinch off will shift to the left the inversion layer so the l effect will keep on reducing right this is what this is the also the uh, secondary expression with channel length modulation okay okay so but we want to see how we can model this so we can want this we know we, we, we saw that we can say is it's a current source what about the output impedance? So output impedance uh, Z0 is defined as delta VDS by delta IDS. And so all, also I can also write delta IDS over delta VDS. What I do is I simply differentiate this with respect to VDS. So it will come ID, write 1 over ID, uh, and uh, ID is a constant, so ID into lambda. right? Uh, we see yeah so this is what the z0 will come out to be and lambda is uh, the the units are the is 1 over volts so hence this will be of impedance so the volts over current this will be your uh, ohms okay so we have an output impedance so we can write this mosfet right we can model this mosfet as a current source in parallel with the output impedance. This is Z0, this is ID. Alright? This is so we have a current source with find out output impedance. Okay, now the final set of questions that I have is uh, a bit short, uh, but it's fine. So we are given in this problem, we are given two MOSFETs, MOSFET 1 and 2. So both have the gate voltage of 1.8 volts, and uh, uh, which is given over here and uh, w by l ratio is the same for both we had need to identify which one is long channel which one is short channel so if you see uh, the expression is as you know is mu c ox w by l for long channel is vg minus vt whole square by 2 if they are the same mosfets right if the threshold voltages are the same the gate bias is the same mu c ox w by l is the same their current should have come out to be the same but the current is not the same this seems that 
MOSFET 2 is saturating early at a, at a lower current. This, this suggests that MOSFET 2, the short channel MOSFET 1, is the long channel. Let's see this. That's what I'm saying. I made these assumptions. Mobility, CEOX, and everything is the same. And what is the identifier? This is short, this is long. The drain saturation voltage, the VDS sat is much smaller here. You can see around 0.4. Here it's around 1 volt or something. And channel modulation effect. Channel modulation affects as this slope, right? Why? What did you say? ID equal to ID naught 1 plus lambda VDS. So ID versus VDS, you see a slope, positive slope, which is seen over here. Channel modulation is more prominent in short channel devices. So that's what we have. Now we have uh, the ele critical electric field. We know that the, the here the critical electric field has not reached in the long channel MOSFET. Okay. So in the long uh, the critical field along across the channel MOSFET is less than EC. That is true, right? For MOSFET two is greater than EC. That's why it's a short channel effect and because the velocity is saturated, causing the current to saturate. All right. Finally, what are the VDS sat? This is just to this is just an observation. So you can see for MOSFET one, VDS sat is somewhere between 0 0.8 and 1.2. So this is incorrect. This is incorrect. This is incorrect. So it's one volts essentially. That's what the problem is saying. For MOSFET two, it's somewhere around 0 0.4 to 0 0.8. So definitely not 0 0.2. Okay, 0.4. Yeah, it can be one volts. No, one volts is definitely not there. And definitely 1.8. So this is the most correct option. So that's how you identify uh, uh, the short channels, MOSFETs versus long channels. Yeah, so I am out of questions now uh, and uh, out of the material as well uh, for this course as a whole. Uh, you have been very, uh, I'll, I'll request you to, there's a feedback that is being feedback form, I believe that has been circulated. Please fill that for the, for the course as well as the, I don't know whether there's for live sessions it's there or not. But a request, if it's not there, please you can write it to me. And there is some feedback which I have received on my on my YouTube channel. Uh, sometimes it happens that my laptop heats up, and there's a sync between audio and visual goes bad. So I'm trying to rectify that. Uh, there's one more. Uh, I re-upload the videos in certain cases. Some cases not even possible. But one more thing. Uh, one of you, I believe, had emailed me regarding the. The, the exam pattern. So exam pattern as far as I recall and even on the website it's intended to be computer based and it's most likely be your uh, multiple choice questions but my advice is that if for the questions that are more than one option correct please attend them only when you are sure. If you have time let's say if you have completed all your other problems yes then you can allocate your time and the level will be more or less similar to your assignments and will more on an understanding based uh, uh, understanding based uh, exam that is going to be conducted all right and for for more details I, I i request the course ta's that are there on a discussion forum for very specific details they'll be able to answer in much more detail and if you have specific thing to ask from me i'll be happy to answer i'll uh, email id i'll share again and uh, uh, that's all from me uh, thank you for your time thank you for your patience that's all. I cannot say we'll meet again next week. But good luck for your exam. And uh, whatever you hope to achieve, you achieve that. That's all. And if there are no more doubts, then I'd like to close the session. Thank you so much for your tutorial sessions. Yes. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Uh, thank you, actually. That's what a very beautiful session, very interesting session sir, from, thank from you. Thank you. And I want to ask you one question. Yes. Uh, in case you have to prepare for PhD interviews related to integrated circuits domain, what, what will be the uh, sorry, expectation sorry, sorry. from I, the... I was not able to understand. Can you repeat? If I want to prepare for PhD interviews in the IITs and IIS in the integrated circuits domain, what will be the level of uh, expectation from the professors? So uh, I would suggest that, that uh, first, see, first of all, you must be aware that you 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 have to clear one of the competitive exams, gate or a national eligibility test yeah, or one yes. of them, right? 
so so once you have cleared that this yes. uh, the, the the basic assumption is that you have basic level of competency this means you are aware of the topics of as, essentially as as a, as a whole you are aware of the certain topics personally what happened okay. with me I, i i gave i wrote my exam in physics i have very less knowledge of thermodynamics and uh, what's what was uh, nuclear physics and there were a couple of other topics which i did not even attempt i attempted zero questions of them okay so know your strengths once you okay. clear the uh, competitive exam then you must prepare only for your strengths so my strengths were let's say electronics uh, classical mechanics and electromagnetics okay when when i appeared in front of the panel i told them that these are my strengths and more often than not they'll respect your choice okay very rare it happens that they'll be okay. said no that we we don't want to hear anything from you we'll ask from thermodynamics if they ask something from me from even if you don't know a problem so politely say to them sir i am not aware of this try to answer to the best of your knowledge if if you're not sure politely say sir uh, i'm sorry sir and ma'am uh, this is a, prob- a topic or problem i have not prepared for uh, i do not know simple do not waste your time do not waste their time because these these okay. interviews okay. when when they're running they can be they run for days okay in every department and the faculty if if you have the last slot or even the middle slot there's a time schedule that in 20 minutes you have to finish an interview just don't drag if you don't know politely say and yes they know they know what they are asking and they know what to what to expect from the candidate focus on your strengths that's all if you don't know prepare only for your strengths that's what i would say right sir yeah okay thanks sir thanks sir for your time yeah happy to help i do have a gate score in uh, ec this year uh, ec gate score i have sir. so i was also preparing for phd interviews Okay. So what yeah. I am asking. Yeah, no, no. So good luck. Best of luck for your interviews. A PR, at least, I would say, do not restrict yourself. A PR in at least two or three, because for the first or second time when I appeared, I did not even know what to answer. Even if I knew the answer, I don't know. I did not know how to speak it. Okay. So you will get only after you face that situation, then only you will realize certain things. And one other thing you might encounter is that some institutes their interviews finish in five minutes. Okay. In some institutes, it takes day. They, they 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 thorough interviews 20 minutes 30 minutes so i personally i do not feel how you can interview a phd candidate in 5 minutes but i believe that's their policies and it's fine so be mentally prepared for that it might last for 5 minutes it might last for 50 minutes okay okay yeah okay and anyways you can write to me for some specific things that you have Okay. Anything else? If not, uh, then we close this session.